Hi all, so in this video we're going to take a look at layering dynamics on top of mesh animation. So let's say we have ourselves a NURBS circle like so. Um, with that selected, select the weighter, at the curve node, go on to distribute, turn the distance off, and then if I just hit play you get this. So I want a load more objects, let's say this many, so I'll spread them out a bit more on the curve, and then push play, you get this. Add dynamics, and what do you get? They just fall straight to the floor. Now the reason for that is because uh, Dynamics is not interested in mesh animation unless you tell it to be. And the way that you tell it to be is to increase its position strength. So if I increase the position strength and the rotation strength, then the objects will try and get to where mesh wants them to be. So you can turn this off and then you can animate this on. Um, and they'll just try and sort themselves out. Now the reason that they're not going precisely back to where they want to go is because this is a magnitude, like in the same way that uh, turbulence or volume axis or gravity, Newton, all that kind of stuff, they all have a magnitude. So what we can do is we can um, up this to say a maximum of 500 instead of 100, and that means that we get much closer. In fact, we get exactly back to our mesh animation. So we can turn this to zero, and then we can turn this right back up again. And you see that we resolve pretty quickly into the right place. So again, maybe um, a bit more on the rotation as well, maybe. Whoops. Okay, there you go. Back to where we were. Um, now uh, what we can do is we'll throw an obstacle in the way. So let's throw an obstacle in the way. Uh, let's put that here. And then we'll just add this sphere as an external collider. Now if we hit play... We hit the sphere, we go around it, and we carry on as before. So it's pretty fun. And you'll see that they don't quite resolve themselves. They're all kind of higgledy-piggledy a little bit. And we can resolve that just by increasing the maximum possible velocity to something higher. Let's say 400, uh, 400. And you'll see that they become they're much more uh, organized when they come back around the sphere on that side. So... I've just increased that rotation strength even more and that fixed that last one there as well. So um, so you, if you set the um, strength and velocity very high, you can um, really sort out, you kind of like make the objects um, very keen to get back to their original positions. So, okay, so that's one example of this. Um, let's uh, show you another quick example. Um, and in this one, let's uh, create um, a cone. And then let's um, create a mesh network from that. And then let's create a, um, a curve like that. And then what I'm going to do is I will create a cylinder, which I will make a lot taller and a bit wider. And then I will add lots of subdivisions in the height, and then I would select both the cylinder and the curve, go uh, deform curve warp, I'll turn off keep length, and then what I'll do is I'm going to make a pinch point, well I'll make a pinch point in the middle, so somewhere like that, okay, and then I'm going to select a vertex at this end, and then one at this end, it's not actually necessary, but I'll go uh, select convert selection to faces and just delete those. Okay, so curve selected, mesh network selected, add a curve node, and then I'm just going to turn the distribution off. Let's have, I don't know, maybe we should have these, let's try 50. Um, on the uh, cone, I'm just going to rotate that. And then if I hit 4, push play, we get this. Okay, um, now I also want to say stop at end of curve and then let's add a little bit of random position to these things so uh, in the y-axis particularly maybe three so that you can definitely see that these things are interpenetrating with the um, cylinder as they fly around it okay stop at end just means that they'll stop when they get to the end, <laughs> then we have the dynamics. So let's add dynamics and then just, just up the position strength and up the rotation strength straight away. And then 
Put that back and you get that. Fair enough. Now we need to add the cylinder as a collision object. So we go cylinder, it's a collider. Um, I'm not actually sure what should happen here, but there you go. So we hit the, I was gonna say, I'm not sure whether I need to change that to mesh, but it's, it's detected automatically. So um, now we just, yeah, we zoom in and we can see that. Oh, there's a little bit of jittery going on there as we hit the pinch point, just maybe because we're a little bit too close together. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just change or spread these out slightly more. Don't wanna fight with it too much. So let's just rewind and hit play. And there you go. So that's his um, kind of like uh, using um, the follow uh, position and rotation to go down a curve through an object. Like you could do um, blood vessels and all that kind of thing with this, you know, like simulate a blockage in a vein or something like that with this kind of a technique. Anyway, so there are two uses um, for the mass position and mass strength. So there you go. Hope you found that useful.